we welcomed her into our family and treated her as one of us. Not only did she betray our brother, it feels as though she has murdered and taken away a part of our souls as well. Because of her actions, there has not been a day that has gone by we have not lived with paralyzing anxiety and fear, worrying for the boys' lives as well as our own. I may be naive, but I never knew evil like this existed. An emotional plea from the sister-in-law of Corey Richens. She is the woman accused of killing her husband, Eric, by poisoning his drink with fentanyl. Amy Richens, who you heard there, begged the judge not to release Corey from jail during the detention hearing in Utah on Monday. After the hearing, and hearing from several other witnesses as well, the judge agreed. Corey Richens will stay behind bars throughout her trial. Her next hearing is set for next week. I want to bring in legal analyst Dr. Laura McNeil. She is a lecturer at Columbia University. I think this, Dr. Lori, is going to be a case that we're following very closely. And I was paying close attention to Lori herself, or Corey, excuse me, herself, during this witness testimony. At times she was kind of huffing and puffing. She was shaking her head in disagreement. What did you make of her demeanor? You know, I thought her demeanor is really going to be harmful for the jury. Uh, she should have not shown any uh, negative emotions whatsoever. I mean, we have a tragic situation where we have three boys that now are left without a father. And so I thought that uh, the jury is going to perceive her uh, demeanor as uh, not very positive. I thought that she should have looked solemn. I mean, this is a murder trial. We have a loss of life. And I think it's going to hurt her case. I want to play another clip from the sister-in-law before the judge. Uh, this, again, is Eric Richens' sister. Here's what she had to say specifically about some of the accusations against Corey Richens. In his last moments, after being intentionally poisoned, he was faced with betrayal and terror. The thought of it is unbearable. I am haunted by the horror of it. This last year has been a living hell for our family. We have watched as Corey has paraded around portraying herself as a grieving window, widow and victim while trying to profit from the death of my brother. Both by trying to profit from a book about his death and trying to get life insurance and assets that should go exactly where Eric wanted them to, to his boys. The family of Eric will be critical in this case. In fact, Eric had warned some of his family members that if anything happens to me, that my wife is responsible. How problematic will that be for the defense? It's extremely problematic. Um, in a trial like this, witness impact statements, which is what we just saw, are very powerful for the jury because it humanizes the victim. The jury doesn't know uh, Eric Richens, but it humanizes them him for the jury and lets them know just how much of an impact, how much this loss of life has impacted not only the young boys, his sons, but their family. And when you have a situation like this where the victim has said, allegedly on multiple occasions, I think my wife is trying to kill me. If anything happens to me, she did it. That's going to be very, very powerful evidence for the jury in terms of having a conviction of Corey Richens. And how damning are some of these internet searches, some of the financials involved in this case that she had taken out two life insurance policies prior to his death? Marty, I'll be honest with you. This case for the prosecutors is almost a slam dunk, and I'm always leery to say that before we've seen all the evidence put forth before the jury. But when you have compelling witness statements, when you have evidence of cell phone searches looking for things such as how do police find forensic evidence on a cell phone, uh, how do police, uh, excuse me, with insurance buyouts, payouts, these are all very, they're just not normal. You don't look do searches uh, trying to figure out how police can retrieve forensic evidence from your cell phone. And so, um, yes, this is circumstantial evidence, but it's very compelling circumstantial evidence that I think will ultimately lead to a conviction for Corey Richens. The defense says that there were no drugs found in the house. Corey has said that her husband wasn't a, a drug user. He was just a partier. Um, how might that play into the defense's strategy? Um, I think it's all they have. They don't have a lot to try to show that there is no connection between the drugs and Corey Richens. But on the flip side of that, the prosecution's job is to show that she was directly connected to the fentanyl that was the deadly uh, dose 
for her husband, Eric Richards. And so I think uh, the housekeeper's testimony is going to be very compelling. She's allegedly uh, saying that she's the one who sold the fentanyl to Lori, Corey Richards. And so uh, the defense has to try to, of course, discredit that testimony and say, hey, she's she has drug charges herself. You can't believe her. So it's really going to be down to who the jury believes, which version of how that deadly fentanyl got to Eric Richards. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.